I'm going to assume that you already know about all the parts that I'm going to be talking about in this discussion. And uh, I'm going to focus more on trying to give you a qualitative understanding of how to look at motors and think about motors rather than uh, bench tests and numbers and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to start with the most controversial topic first, which is going to be the stator size and the numbers of the motor in general. Okay, so let's go over the parts of the motor real quick. The most important part is probably not the most important, but one of the main parts is the stator of the motor. The stator of the motor is the middle, which is the part that these wires are connected to and actually flip the magnetic poles back and forth and spin the motor around. And the stator is made up of layers of metal that are highly, highly magnetic, or just not magnetic, but very ferrous metal. So probably an iron kind of material. It's probably not just a pure iron because that's kind of heavy or maybe it is, I don't know. Whatever it is, they're very thin laminations. And when you look at the lamination thickness of a motor, that's what it's referring to, I'm pretty sure. I'm not, I'm not totally sure about anything I'm talking about here. This is all just stuff that I've kind of gained over the past year of looking at things and looking at a lot of numbers. And I'm just gonna tell you my notions and information that I've gained from talking to Ryan Harold, which is the owner of Mini Quad Test Bench, and he is awesome. And if you wanna talk about motors, he knows more about motors than anybody, anybody I've ever talked to. Um, so there's no science here. It's just kind of a qualitative discussion. So the lamination thickness, I believe, is how thick each layer of each sheet of the stator metal is. And the reason why thinner is better is because it reduces something called eddy currents. Now, I don't remember my physics perfectly, so I can't tell you exactly what eddy currents are, but I do know that when there's more eddy current, it reduces the magnetic output of that pole of the motor, so it just reduces the, over it's a negative effect on the magnetic output of the motor. So thinner laminations are better because it reduces the amount of eddy currents that are within the stator when the motor is flipping its poles back and forth to generate the magnetic field to spin the motor. Okay, so now the next part is gonna be the actual magnets themselves. Now, we go by the numbers of this magnets, N42SH, N52, all these various numbers. The higher the number is supposed to be higher the the magnet, magnetic properties of the metal. I don't know if N52 is actually a real thing or if they're actually using N52. I don't think anybody really does know. Ryan says that he can definitely tell on his bench. I believe him at that because I pretty much believe his word as gospel. Um, but for the most part, stronger magnets are better. Stronger, thinner magnets are better, and we'll discuss why later on. And then the next most crucial component is going to be the air gap. The air gap is how far the magnets are held from the stator. And it's hard to see on the, oh, there we go. You can see this here really clearly. The air gap on this motor, which is the Brother Hobby Returner R4, you can't even, I can't even find space between there. And I have actually one motor on one of my quads that the air gap is so tight that it's actually scraping the stator. And it's still smooth, it's still balanced, but it's, it's scraping the stator, which is kind of incredible. Okay. So now we know the main components of the motor that make a difference in terms of actual performance. The wire gauge, the wire thickness also matters, but the thicker the wire just means it can, the more current it can, it can maintain without burning up. And um, that's a pretty basic thing. And I really don't know if a thicker gauge wire is gonna perform better than a thinner gauge. I do know that the thinnest gauge wires or the really tightly wrapped thin gauge wires are kind of crappy. They do burn out kind of quickly. And thicker gauge wires like you see here on this motor are better quality and they hold up better. Okay, so now let's get back to the discussion of stator size. What does stator size actually mean? Not that much. <laughs> the construction of the motor means a lot more than the stator size. But we'll continue to think about stator size. All right, so the stator size, the stator height. Height is going to give you better performance at high RPM. Now what that means is that when you're going fast, when the blade is spinning fast, the motor has more torque at the higher RPM range so it can make transitions from high RPM to higher RPM or highest RPM to just high RPM much faster, much easier. It's easier for it to manage that throttle range at high RPM. What stator width does is it gives it more, it does give it more torque, but not at the high RPM, only at the low RPM. It's very important you know you take that into consideration because a wide high kV motor is a bad idea. And I'll tell you right now why that is. The reason is because if you have something like a 2503 motor, which is 25 width, 25 circumference, and three millimeter height, that motor will very quickly be able to generate a load of torque and get the prop spinning fast. But then once it is spinning fast, 
the wide stator has trouble managing the high RPMs because it's just too much. It's too much motor that's spinning. It's just too much. So it needs some motor height to take over once it overcomes its RPM range that it's good at managing. So what's the main difference between a taller stator and a wider stator? A taller stator will, be, will give you better power. And what power means is higher up on the RPMs. A wider stator will give you better torque. And that's kind of arguable because all, all brushless motors have a lot of torque. But it gives you better gyroscopic effect. And what I mean by that is that when a company makes a motor like this, they create the motor, then they put it on this jig that spins the motor real fast, and then it moves it. Moves it kind of in this pattern like this. And it measures how much gyroscopic resistance the motor has from resisting and actually stopping the, the, the movement that it's giving it. And a wider stator is going to give it a better ability to resist that gyroscopic movement. So now let's discuss the 2306 and why in my previous video I said that it kind of feels better in the air and why the steel motor is a 2306. The reason why 2306 feels better is because it's a wider motor and it has slightly, very slightly better gyroscopic effect which means that at those mid throttle levels it has an easier time maintaining the rpms that you're asking it to while you're doing your acrobatic tricks that is why the wider motor just feels better that being said now let's talk about the construction of the motor and why that's so much more important the construction of the motor is far more important because Brother Hobby actually makes a 1608 motor, which is not, I don't even think anybody sells that motor, but it's a 1608 motor, which is, you know, kind of one step up from the 1407, and speaking of which, the 1407 motor that they do make, it's a beast, and it runs, it gives you 750 grams of thrust from a four-inch blade, from a four-inch twin blade, you get 750 grams of thrust. Talk about, talk more about that later, but, so the 1608 motor, that motor that they've made, it will give you 1,353 grams of thrust on a five inch twin blade. On a five by four, that's nuts. This is a, I think it's, uh, what is it, 3,000 kV or 3,500 kV? That's a crazy amount of thrust from such a tiny motor. Now let's look at the weight of the motor. The motor weighs 25 grams. That is more weight than most 2205 motors, not most, a lot of 2205, there's 2205 motors that are lighter than, that are about 24 grams. So you're looking at a motor that's a 1608 motor that can generate more thrust than most 2205 motors, which is wild. But let's look at why that is. It's because they're using super strong, super thick, super curved magnets with a super thin air gap, super tight stator laminations, super nice thick uh, wrappings and that adds up to a 25 gram motor and no duh it's gonna push that many that many uh, that much thrust because it's built like mad crazy tough the problem is that now you have a motor that weighs as much as a higher class motor yet it can't really push a 5 inch blade reliably because number one it draws 40 something amps to give you that thrust and number two the motor runs hot so now you got to dumb it down to a 4-inch blade, and now you just got a motor that weighs too much for a 4-inch blade. And that just sucks. So the problem that Brother Hobby Motors have right now is that they have a lineup of super motors, but they can't you can't really use them because they just they just are too heavy. They're too heavy for the class that they're for. All right, I can continue talking about this for a long time, but I'm I think just if you kind of understood everything I said that will kind of give you the beginnings of an understanding of motors and what to look for which is construction you should look for motor construction and then I'm gonna qualitatively tell you that the width that you need for the given prop or anything that you want to spin on it you need to have the stator width to have the torque at low end to efficiently spin the blades but then once you pick up speed you need to have the stator height in order to actually maintain that speed and manage that high RPM speed and have good feel and good, good performance at the high RPMs. So I can't exactly tell you what width is good for what, but I can tell you that the 1407 motor 
that Bridal Hobby makes makes 750 grams of thrust on a four inch blade. And if you consider how much thrust a 2205, 2600 kV motor makes, which is either the RCX or the ZMX motor, they make about the same on a four inch blade, on the same four inch blade. When you give them a five inch blade, yeah, they kill the 1407. But you should note that adding an extra, what? six millimeters of stator width did not give you any performance increase and also the the 1407 has two millimeters of stator height on top of the 2205 so i think that's why the 1407 actually performs better on a four inch blade than a 2205 motor a very good performing 2205 motor at that it's just a bonus that the 1407 weighs half the weight <laughs> Not half the weight. It weighs 15 grams rather than 24, 25 grams. Okay. Giving those examples, now I'm going to look at some other motors, and we're going to discuss the motors as more examples of what is good and what is bad and, you know, what to think about. Okay, the first motor we're going to start with... Sorry, it's getting late. I just got home from work. first motor we're going to start with is the DYS 2008. 2008. This is a 20 millimeter wide, 8 millimeter tall stator. This was a very, very interesting motor. Actually, I'm going to turn on my flash. Oh, wow, that is a lot of flash. This is a very interesting motor. It was a very interesting motor when it first came out, and that was because it was 2,000, 20 wide, and 8 tall, which means that it should have very good high RPM performance. It is a 2550 kV motor, so it's interesting to think that this motor should have performed well, but unfortunately, the construction of the motor was poor. The magnets were weak. Uh, I can't really see anything else right now to discuss about that, but generally, the magnets were weak, and the construction of the motor was not that great. Let's look at this motor. This is the this is the Pyro, the Pyro Flip 2204-2550 kV motor. This was the answer to the Schizo motor way back when. It was actually better than the Schizo motor way back when. And uh, this is using um, N42 magnets. The air gap on this is pretty wide. There is pretty substantial air gap. And the Sator is using very thin wiring but it's an actually an awesome motor. And it's an awesome motor because it's a 2204, it weighs 22 grams, and it can spin a five inch blade very, very well. It doesn't produce a lot of power. It only gives you about, I'm guessing, maybe 800 grams on a five inch blade, which is not a lot. But if you put it on a super light quad, this thing rips hard. And because it has weaker magnets, it has an easier time running 5S and 6S. It can run 6S perfectly fine because the magnets are so weak that when you give it all that extra power, it's not like forcing itself faster and faster and faster and faster because the magnets just can't keep up. So the motor actually kind of limits itself because of its poor construction. Here is the brother Tornado T1 2300 KV. Well, 2300 is just kind of slow for me. KV is a totally different discussion, but um, basically I'm just, I'm just going to continue with this. I don't want this video to be super long. Um, so this is also a very good motor, except that 2300 is just slow. The 2600 kV is better, although it pulls tons of amps on pretty much any prop you put it on. And uh, this particular motor's uh, bell design has these these kind of um, fins on it, which are not aerodynamic, and I think it actually does slow it down. And uh, yeah, slows it down. Something to think about as well. So to recap, motor construction. Motor construction, motor construction is far more important than the stator size and the motor size or any of these other little details that we focus on so much. It's not so much about like, oh, I have a 2508 motor. It's more about I have a very high quality motor and that's why we pay money for motors. We don't pay money for a big stator because it doesn't mean anything. We want the most powerful motor in the lightest package possible. This is the first video I'm gonna make on this. I'm going to make a follow-up video because there's a lot more to, this is to discuss in this department. That's it for now.